Do you guys recognize where this outfit's from? probably guessed it already from the title, but this is one of Lindsay Lohan's outfits from Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, and this was sort of my tipping my toe in the pool of making the Eliza dress. Anyways, my name is Mackenzie and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I take you on the behind the scenes of my latest cosplay making project. And today's video is going to take on another one of Lindsay Lohan's iconic characters. She had so many iconic looks from this movie, but my absolute most favorite is the Eliza dress. I have truthfully been purchasing fabrics for this costume for the last year, like for real, and just having so many issues getting started. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's start out our process by talking about the different supplies. So a big component of her outfit is this like loose weave, like spiderweb looking fabric. And I was only able to find it in white online. So we're gonna go ahead and dye it and try to make it a bright red. Unfortunately for me, the fabric is 100% polyester. So it makes it really difficult to get it to actually take color. So I'm trying to use an acid dye first, which I read is supposed to be good for dyeing polyesters and then I also tried a writ dye and neither of them really took the color so we had to go back to square one. I am resorting to have to use my ultimate nemesis to get this fabric to dye. I dye poly, I have this more orange red and this more pinkish red and this is where we're at. I really hate using this because it smells so like rancid but this is all the best that I was able to do with the writ dye and the acid dye. We obviously can't have that. Uh, it needs to be dark, so I'm really, really hoping that suffering through this will be worth it. So we'll find out. For the Hail Mary that is I Dye Poly, I'm combining both of those colors and dropping each of the packets in and starting to dissolve them. They kind of look like soy sauce packets when you drop them in, and then they dissolve with the little agent that they have, and it's kind of like a beautiful potion, but it smells truly so terrible. Just doing a little check to make sure it's gonna be dark enough, and a lot of this color washes out, which is why I thought originally the first method would work. So I soaked it to be so much darker than I actually needed it to be. It's like burgundy here, and then washed it out, and eventually it got to be the right color. It's truly just stains everything it touches so be super careful if you use this and this final color is what i would have loved for it to stay but obviously when it's wet it looks darker so this is a comparison for the wet and dry version the dries on the right and while this fabric has the loose knit and the color now that i'm looking for it's lacking sequins so i went through a lot of trial and error to figure out how to deal with this problem so let me just take you through that real quick i decided against the all over sequin fabric and found this really good option at joanne but the sequins didn't end up taking the color and the color turned out too dark red so I had to go back to the drawing board. Which brings me to the final composition of fabrics and the solution was a polyester fabric that's basically plastic open knit and it had little tiny sequins that actually took the red dye and our third and final fabric is this pink cotton polyurethane blend. It has a little bit of a stretch to it, but that's fine. It's going to be the base. And so I'm going to put those other two layers on top of this and have just a little bit of that hot pink show through just like her dress. And after literal months, almost a year of finagling fabrics to get the right final pieces, let's get into actually cutting something. The silhouette of the dress itself is pretty simple. It's actually just four pieces and I'm using a pattern that I already used before for my Mean Girls dress that I found on Etsy and I'll be happy to link it in the description below. I also last minute decided that I wanted to put some boning in it. So I'm making a little under corset and just doing it to the waist so that I can add some structure and like make it much more of a snatched dress. Then I'm just sewing those together and we'll check in because I ended up undoing this. Okay, so I didn't check in with you guys yesterday because while I was making this, I was kind of feeling crazy. Crazy. And frankly, I kind of still am. So let's back up and see what's going on. Here's where we're at with the dress. It's long. The reason that I'm kind of so frantic with this is because this is the worst part of doing the dress is the under part. All my brain wants to do is put all the embellishments on. I want to do this. <laughs> so it just looks so good. And after going back and forth and being actually insane about the color of this fabric, I think it's fine. I think that this is like perfect. Just need to check in with my brain and let it know everything's fine and it's not an emergency and I don't have to dye this fabric again. So with that said, uh, I don't like how I've been putting this together. So I've put in a piece of duck fabric that only goes to the waistline because I'm only putting boning to the waistline and what I should have done instead of sewn the seams like this 
make this duck fabric piece first, put that together, and then match my top to it so that I wouldn't have seams showing. You know, it's actually possible that if I undo this whole thing, I could make that happen. And then I would have a less weird top because it's like kind of messed up. So I'm gonna take this whole thing apart and then put it together in a way that is like more professional. So let's do that. I've been calling anything that is structured a corset, but this is like a little mini bustier that goes in into the dress. So I've just taken duck fabric, lined it with muslin fabric, and I'm putting in boning channels, inserting plastic boning, and then attaching it to the dress. Okay, so the situation is this. It's very messy in here, but I'm just gonna keep on moving along and clean it up later. So I have a limited amount of this fabric. It's literally just this much and I have plenty of this like way more than I need to and since I only have a limited amount of this one I'm only going to be doing the three layers on the dress by putting this fabric in between my top netting fabric and my base pink fabric it's going to give me more of the sequin look without having to hand sew or glue them all on to the dress and it makes it look a little bit more red than it does pink which I think is good for overall I'm starting out by cutting on the plastic sequin fabric because I have a very limited amount because for some reason when I bought it, I only bought one yard as a tester and it ended up being the one I went with. And then when I tried to go back and buy more, there was no more in existence. So I just had to get creative with scrap pieces, but it's okay because this was an under fabric and it ended up looking fine. I cut out all those same shapes for my top fabric and then started making my fabric sandwich and sewing everything together. And I just need to take a moment to look at how beautiful this combo is because it just took so long to get to that point and I'm so happy with how it came out. Okay, where the heck were we? I have the under bustier, bustier corset thing that I'm going to be putting in for structural integrity on the top. That is going to go like this around and have a zipper up the back. Here are all of the pieces that need to be sewn together. The construction plan is that I'm just gonna sew all these together and attach this to this at only the top and the back where the zipper goes. That way if I need to take either of them in, I can go ahead and do that without having to unpick a bunch of seams. Here is a close up. It's like so sunny. Here's the close up of the fabric. Thanks once it's like flattened out like this, it's gonna look really good. So, good. And then starts the process of just assembling things. So it's basically a big puzzle and you just follow the instructions from the pattern and sew it together. And I know what you're thinking, wait, what about the plastic ribbon bow things that have to go on the sides? Well, I need to take the dress in first because I'm really bad at following patterns for sizing. I like to make it super custom, so I just cut it to be a couple sizes bigger than I need and take it in where I need it from there, especially if I need to match um, seams to a dress that doesn't exactly match up to the pattern I'm using. So all of that to say, we have to do this process first. And basically what that process entails is completely assembling the dress and I'm only going to be undoing the seams where I wanna put in those bits. So I'm just finishing the top with the bustier on the inside. I put them together, right sides together, sewed it, flipped it inside out and I have a nice clean top. And then I'm just going to be sewing the sides together, adding a zipper and fitting it until it fits me perfectly. I don't wanna discuss my hair right now. I'm extremely disheveled, but here is where we're at with the dress. It's looking pretty good. I still have to hem the bottom and take the bottom in, but the top is pretty good for the most part. Before I do that, I want to make these little bow things that go on the sides. So I have this vinyl. I have had this vinyl in my closet since 20, since January of 2020 when I made my Harley Quinn confetti jacket from Birds of Prey. So this is all the leftovers, and I'm happy that I could use it again and that I kept it. It's like. That got stuck to the wall. Very thick. So that's what we want. And the ribbon will just go on top of this. I'm cutting out a couple different size options and ended up going with a two and a half inch width for the top and three and a half inch width for the bottom sides. And I have been collecting ribbons since the previous Christmas season, so I've amassed a couple different size options, but I ended up using a half inch and then a 5 eighths inch piece on the wider piece and then used a 5 eighths five eighths inch piece and three eighths inch piece on the smaller one. I tried clipping the ribbon into place, but actually found that it was easier to just eyeball it and 
flip it over so that the ribbon was on the bottom side so it just glides through the machine a lot easier because the feed dogs on the bottom help you move the velvet whereas the top foot was getting stuck. I have made all of these little ribbon things. I have to undo this seam here and this seam on the side and first start with this one. I'm going to add this in and sew it about an inch down here because hers folds over slightly and then just goes in flush with the back. This is my first time putting it up against it. It looks so good. Okay, I probably won't need all of these, but I do have to make a bow to go on the front, so we'll go from there. But obviously I have the top one and the side one, which is slightly wider. And that will go, same thing here, a little bit folded over and wrapping around the side. So I love it. The ribbon insertion process was pretty self-explanatory, but with the open weave of this fabric and getting it on the machine without snagging anything was like the Olympics of sewing. It was so difficult to maneuver, but we made it through. After I had all of those in place and tried it on just so many times to make sure the alignment was right, we moved on to making these little loopies out of the leftover and stacking them together to make a bow. But it turns out the bow that I made was a little bit like stiff and chonky and that's not what we were going for. But we'll circle back to that problem in a second. Right now I'm going to be remembering that I have to make the little like shawl thing for this. So I'm just cutting out a little bolero pattern that I got on Etsy and using that same open weave red fabric and this one is not gonna have sequins on it and that's okay. I'm slightly modifying the pattern to make it a little bit more of like a boxy crop top and then once I have the dress on and know where everything is, I can do my cuts but I'm making it a little jacket situation so I'm cutting it down the front and I'll be adding a collar like the one that she has and probably doubling up the fabric that I use to make it a little bit stiffer, sewing those arms on and finishing it off with some embellishments around the collar and the wrists with the 3 8 inch velvet ribbon. And for the closure, I made a Mr. Little Tiny Bow that I'm going to sew on the front of the collar, hand sewing that and then hand sewing a hook and eye to hold it together. With the mini jacket assembled, I'm just cutting a raw edge around the sides and pinning my bow on to confirm that no, it does not look good. And before I forget, I know people are gonna ask about where I got the bottle cap necklace because it is one of the most important pieces of the costume. I did make it, so let's get into that quickly because it's pretty simple. I got these bottle caps on Etsy and we are gonna drill holes in them and make a necklace out of it. I mapped out what I wanted the necklace to look like on my iPad and then I'm going to be using this little like mini screwdriver attachment on my Dremel and I'm marking out where I want all the holes to go on the bottle cap to correspond with the picture that I drew for the outline. Then I'm going in with my Dremel and very carefully cutting the little holes and I suggest using protective equipment when you do this because I was wearing glasses but I probably should have been wearing a mask and maybe some hand protection because there was like a lot of metal dust flying around after. And after you cut all of those holes with the Dremel, the hard part's over and I'm just using some jump rings to attach my silver metal like string, what is that called? Metal chain to it. She has like those ones with the little balls but I couldn't find that and then I wouldn't know how to attach it if I did find it. So I just laid everything out and I'm just cutting it to the right size and it came out looking so cute. But anyways, back to the dress. Um, I'm obsessed with it. I think it came out so good. However, I really don't like this bow because the vinyl that I was using is a really thick gauge. I need something that's gonna crinkle a little bit more here. So yesterday when I was at Mood, I got this vinyl for $5. It's much thinner. It should be able to crinkle more when I do it that way. So I'm gonna cut three strips of this and then just redo those bows. Resew all of my different uh, ribbons <laughs> and then just Sew them together and smush it. On my final brain cell, I just reviewed those few and you can't tell me that it doesn't look so much better, even though it's just a tiny little detail. And with that, it's time for the reveal.
time to wrap her up and I don't really have anything else to say other than she's absolutely gorgeous and everything that I ever dreamed and hoped that she could be. It's, it's just the only thing that I could possibly think about wanting to change would just be to hand sew a bunch of sequins all over this. But right now I just don't think that that's worth my limited free time. So this is post photo shoot, post soaking wet in the rain. And I was really worried about color transfer from this fabric, but it actually was fine. Like I don't really think it got that much on anything. It got a little bit on my tights, but for the most part, it didn't discolor anything and it looks pretty good. Wearability in the rain is pretty good because I seem to be doing a theme of wet photo shoots this year with this one and then my Elizabeth Swan one, which I just swam in the ocean in. Sometimes you gotta take a little bit of a risk with cosplays that you spent a month making to really capture the essence of the costume and I'm just couldn't be more happy with how it came out. I don't normally share photos from the photo shoot in my YouTube videos, but these were just so good, I have to include them. And major shout out to Alyssa, here's her handle absolute breathtaking photography, amazing skills. I can't even put into words how good these photos are. It's like truly my favorite part of finishing a project is putting it on, going to do the photo shoot, and then looking at the final pictures and being like, yeah, I made that. The pictures just perfectly capture everything that I had imagined for this costume and I feel like they really represent the character well and I'm just so happy with how it came out. But I think that wraps everything up so thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to come back for more cosplay content. I have a pretty stacked fall season coming up so I just can't wait to get started on the next one and we'll go quickly to a brief aside because I want to share a little bit of like costume lore about this because it actually has like two prior source materials that it comes from and I just love costume design so much so stick around if you want to see that but thank you guys bye okay uh this is not coming from my brain but I just wanted to share it with you because it's a little like a easter egg movie lore this tweet says when I say confession of a teenage drama queen 2004 has spectacular costume design I am in no way kidding just look at how they recreated this dress from My Fair Lady in 1964. This dress. In a modern way, so it matches a school play, which is a contemporary retelling of the story. So look at these two dresses next to each other. Whoever this modern girls on Twitter is obsessed. And thank you for showing this to us. But anyways, I just wanted to show you that this source material has previous source material and it's just so cool. Just a silly teen girl. Just a girl.